Hello. Oh, Welcome. hello. Hello. We've got something different today. The BMW Connected Ride Navigator. Hard to see that. Well, I'm going to get it out of the box in a minute. So well, because it, it. there's plastic on it. Yeah, there is plastic on it. So we've very, very kindly been lent this by Ocean BMW down in Falmouth. So we can have a look at it. <gasps> it's a box opening. Ah. So in the box, what do we get in the box? So this is the replacement for the BMW Nav 6, yeah? Yeah, and this is, by all accounts from everybody that I've spoken to, had nothing to do with Garmin. This is all BMW in-house um, from the ground up. Oh. So... I take it there's no Garmin in here because oh. playing around with it, it looks like the same maps that's on the connected ride. Yeah, TomTom. -tom. So that's TomTom, -tom, isn't Ooh. it? But was other, it? I don't, yeah. Other, other GPS. We might well change available. our view of TomTom. -tom. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, so that's starting up and it shows a BMW logo Ooh. on it. Hopefully it'll start up. We have charged it. Yeah. Oh, there, there you are. go. Connected ride. And then in a second, it'll say that you've got to swipe up. There we go. It says no SIM card. So you can put a SIM card in here and have it running um, independently of a phone, which is quite good. But then you've obviously got to have another contract, <laughs> yeah. which is really annoying. But you've got to swipe up. And then you've got your navigation screen and you've got your motorcycle. So when it connects to your motorcycle, you can find out the information on there. Um, media, phone, connectivity hub, rides, settings. And that's about it. So let's go to navigation. It's a nice screen, doesn't it? It's really Has nice. It's got a cover on it. At the no, I've taken it off. Oh, yeah. Right. But this is, it's got to be... Um, um, uh, Tom Tom, isn't it? Because that's that's not it's not Garmin Maps, is it? But it's got the speed up there. I think that's for your your um, orientation. Orientation. There yeah. you go. It's found us, uh, which is really good. Um, you can have it on different settings and stuff, and we'll go into that a little bit later. But what else do we get in the box? Let's look at the box. Oh, and there's in here. There's Map updates. I don't want to do map updates. Right. Not for the minute. Right. You get a USB-C cable, because oh. this is USB-C. Oh. Uh, another USB-C cable, but this one is USB-C to USB-C. So they're thinking about where you're going to plug it in, not just the old version. Because a lot of cars are now USB-C, USB-C. Yeah, so that's quite good. You get... Uh, a sock? I knew what you were going to say then. <laughs> yeah. a, a bag, a bag, <laughs> what you like. And then you get all of the paperwork. And the paperwork is very scant, just all the battery warnings. Nobody's and stuff. doing manuals anymore, it's all online, isn't and it? And how to get started. There you go. So the battery, so that when you, when you look at the unit, it's very much Garmin, isn't it? Now I think Garmin was. It's like a Garmin base, isn't it? Yeah, but I don't know whether Garmin was dictated to how they designed this from BMW as how they wanted it to fit, or whether BMW's evolved into, we've taken on this preparation kit and this is how we want it moulded, which then ended up being Garmin, I don't know. Well, it's like the Nav 6, was this Garmin Zumo 660, wasn't it? Or something like that? Or something like 600. that. 600? Yeah. But that's a Garmin base, isn't it? That's definitely Garmin. Yeah, and then same principle as the Garmin, uh, the Navigator 6, unscrew those and you've got your um, battery. battery in there. Then you've got your USB socket. Can't get it open. Bear with See me. Ya. Thanks for coming. Bear with me. Is that a toolbox that you got from... Uh, Apex 66. Apex 66 yeah, over Apex there. 66. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Hang on. USB-C port. Hopefully you'll be able to see that. Yeah. And then what else have we got on it? We've got nothing around any of the other edges, but then you've got an on-off button. So the SD card or the um, SIM card and all that sort of stuff is in there. Which is Garmin. Well, I, th I don't know whether it's Garmin had made these sat-navs 
for BMW with Garmin's mount, but Garmin's mount has turned into being a BMW thing because every BMW with the sat prep has got this mount. So yeah. have they molded into one or was it BMW? But let's fit it on the bike. Da, da, da. This is Alvin. So this is Alvin. Alvin is my 2023 BMW RT 1250. Well yeah, it's got about 1,800 miles on it already. Gee yeah. whiz. So it goes in exactly the same way as any navigator. It fits in the bottom and it plugs in the top. And then you can lock it in and it's there. So let's turn the bike on. Oh, I know. It's Make life nice. a ride. Now, you see that it says that it's connected there. So that's really good. But where does it say it's connected? It had it oh, on, okay. on the screen. I was looking elsewhere. The only thing that I've... So you've got the little indicator on there saying that it's charging, so it's all okay. So all the charge is running through the cradle as, as it would normally be. It's telling us where we are. But on BMW, GSAs, GSs, um, the old RTs and stuff that had the um, Garmin Navigator placeholder in there, you used to be able to press here on this menu button press and hold up and that would change your control from go the from nav. TF, yeah. tft to nav wouldn't it this won't do it on a rt and i think that's i spoke to bmw and i think it's because they want people to use this rather than have that because you can't buy this for a bmw um, rt the new ones you can't spec it up with the prep i've had to put the prep on myself although the clip is the DIN clip or whatever, um, not DIN clip, the CAN bus clip is all inside here anyway, all ready to be clipped See, it's in. It's weird, isn't it? They, they want, I mean, people would choose to have that. Yeah. Because I know people who've, who've been on tours with me with this and have struggled with it. Yeah. But, you know. but I, I do like it. I mean, I have had a couple of times when I've try and, been trying it out that it has taken ages and ages to find a satellite um, signal wow. and I've had to turn it off and turn it back on again and I've been in the middle of nowhere or you know no obsession. Isn't it? You're lost. <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> here we are. We're out in the cold now. It's not really cold is it? It's like 1.5 degrees and we've come out so that we can show you what this sat nav is like. In the cold. In, a, in the cold <laughs> on a bike. So what's it like? Well it's cold and if you've got no hair it's really cold. Have you got no hair? Oh, has the wig come off? <laughs> it's in my helmet. Anyway, should we have a look at this sat There no, we go. Well, hopefully so, it won't go off. So this is the BMW Connected Ride sat -na or navigation device, isn't it, from BMW? It is if you tell me, yeah, because yeah. I'm not... You've seen us take it out of the box, <laughs> and now we've got it fitted into In the Mark's... comforts of a warm kitchen. <laughs> yeah, we've got it on Mark's GSA, all connected in, and we're going to hopefully... Inside the BMW... BMW preparation. Normal one, the normal one for the NAV5 and the NAV6. Yeah, hopefully we're going to be able to show you what it does without it focusing on our hand too much. So shall we, shall we swap, swap places? Okay. Is this us swapping places? Yeah. And you can... What are you trying to say? You've got better fingers for TV than I have. Where are you going now? I'm going for a run. Right. So this is the navigator. So when you first start it up, so let's turn your bike on and then it starts. turn it off. I've got a battery pack in there. So have I. Oh. We'll do a video about that. Yeah. Anyway, back to the GPS. Well, we want this to turn itself off so we can show people what it's like. So oh. let's turn it off. So let's power it off and then it clicks in exactly the same way into your um, mount as the Navigator 6. It's got a long slit there, two slits on the top, and it just clicks in and locks. Couldn't be simpler Marvelous. than that, can it? So let's start your bike, shall we, Mark? Yeah. Be running for about half an hour. Oh, God. <laughs> so when we start the bike up, you get this symbol, the BMW symbol, which comes on. Showing, the, showing you that you've got power, and then you get this connected ride screen. Wow. But then you've got to wait just a little bit longer because then it flips to another quick screen, goes a bit dim, you've got the time, and then it says swipe to use. And when you swipe up, that's what you get. Right. 
tells the tells you that the bike is connected. So that's really good. So your wheel <laughs> will work the sat nav, which is brilliant. Excellent. So if your battery runs down, Mark, I've got a battery starter in there to get you on your way, all right? Okay, Other than yeah. that, I'll leave you in the cold. All right. No, no hat, right? You can always push it. It's only four miles. So along the top, we've got a little motorbike, a SIM card, a Wi-Fi symbol and a battery symbol. And the battery symbol has got a little Z in it, which is, means it's charging. And it's dictated to by this little light, which says it's charging through the bike. And the bike is, I, I think that's just the mode of transport you're using. The SIM card means that you can put a SIM card into it and have its own data. And obviously it's got Wi-Fi so you can connect it at home or to a Wi-Fi to update the maps and stuff. But this bit here is highlighted and I can go in and out with the zoom wheel to get to the maps. So it's connected to the jockey wheel then? Yeah. Whatever you call it. Whizzy wheel, wheel, jockey happy wheel. wheel. Happy wheel, never heard it called that. Wheel of fortune. <laughs> that came back, didn't it? Or it's coming back. So you can go into it and you can go by pressing right to start. We've got spot markers and we've got settings. So shall we first go back to the main screen? And all I'm doing is clicking left and right. Left to go back to the main screen and right to select it up and down to go and select stuff. So let's start with the bottom one, shall we? Settings. So on your settings, you can have it connected to your BMW ID. If you- That's the connected app, is it? With the connected app, the same sort of thing that yeah. you have. Uh, navigation, let's have a look at the settings. So you can change your map settings to perspective, north or journey. Ooh. And I like perspective because then that shows you how you're moving. Map style, automatic, you can have it day or night. Depends on what you want. I think automatic is really, really good. Then we've got map labels. You can change the in-device language or in language of current country, <laughs> which <laughs> sounds really strange, but when you're riding around France, Spain, somewhere else that isn't in the same language as you, sometimes it's handy to see the same names that appear, especially if you're around yep. Morocco and places like that, yep. where those um, languages perhaps don't make as much sense when you see the letters as they do in your home country. So you can show traffic or you can turn it off. That's Does that have to be logged? As, if it's logged into the connected app, that will have that, will it? Yeah. It, will yeah. that take data off your phone? It will take data off your phone, yeah. Same as the Garmin and all of those sort of things. Then we've got auto zoom. You can turn that on and off. So when you get to a junction, it will zoom into the junction and the lane that you need to go Always on Always good to have that on. Really good, actually. Reverse zoom direction. You can turn that off and on. It Obviously, the zoom direction is reversed there. Uh, whatever that means. Yeah. You can show your favourites. So if you have favourites like your home, I wouldn't suggest having that on there in case somebody finds your sat nav and they know where you live. And they know um, you're out. Yeah, but <laughs> if you've been to somewhere really special when you've been on a tour and you love that place, you're going to go back again. You could select that as a favourite where you are and you could show it on the map. Show speed limits, which is really, really good. Show GPS warnings. So that's um, warnings about whether you lost the GPS, whether you've got it. Presumably, this is where you would get the settings for your... Um, speed cameras and that sort of thing, I would have thought. Then show active calls. So when it's connected to your phone, you can have the calls going through this, same as you would on the now. It's actually, because that's duplicating what's on the TV, on, on the TFT screen. Yeah, it is, isn't it, a little bit. Yeah. So let's go back out of there. Navigation settings. Now you've got route options here. You can consider traffic, which would again take your data and as you can see, you can only click on and off, but you can select the route options from fast, short, efficient, because this is made by Germans. Mm -hmm. And Germans are efficient in every way, aren't they? Fast so, and efficient are usually the same, though, in my experience. Yes. So it's probably fast, but you can also have winding, and Ooh. you can choose whether it's high winding, medium winding, or low winding. Your voice has changed. Have you come, like, you've got your posh voice on or are you just cold? Yes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be flying at 40,000 feet. <laughs> you can avoid highways, which is really good for some routes. You can avoid tolls and toll routes, which is really good if you're around London, around the M25. You don't want to get caught with that shizzle. Dirt roads. You can avoid dirt roads, especially seeing as though you've got GSA, Mark. Yeah. You might not want to go on a dirt road on no. your GSA. Avoid ferries. 
I highly suspect that you would get to the edge of the port and realise that you were there before you needed to avoid it. Some However, people don't. you can avoid it. <laughs> and then you can avoid tunnels as well, which is really, really good. Spoken instructions, you can have the frequency at max. So this is going to tell you all the time what's going on. If you Can you have it. it at never? Yes. Oh, excellent. Which is how I use it all the time, actually. Media during voice announcement. Well, you which... haven't listened to it. You haven't switched off. Oh, I never have them speak. Oh, I can't bear it. Couldn't no. bear the thought of it talking to me. You can have media during voice announcement, which is really good because lots of people listen to music. But when the lady or man or whoever yeah. speaks to you, it reduces or cuts the music out and you can change that to reduce or off. So it will lower the music so you can listen to the uh, instructions and then put the music back up again. Issue spoken instruction even. Even? Yeah. Even if? I don't know whether that's odd or even, <laughs> but you can only click it on and off. Bit strange there. Navigation information, you can have arrival time, delay, duration, distance, oh, your waypoint, nice. delay, all that sort of stuff. Which is what you used to be, I get on the bottom of your screen of your nav. Yeah. Six, so if I just whiz back quickly to... Something. The navigation. Now that box, if you've got something set, will come up here. And it's much like the Garmin's where we used to have all the stuff written down there with all your time to via, time to distance, you know, that sort of stuff. So you can have that set on there as well. So we were in settings, weren't we? So you can change your ride. Ooh. You can record the ride, which is good. But bear in mind, if you're going to record the ride, it will record your speed and Lots of police officers around the world, particularly in Europe, are very adverse to knowing exactly how to find out that information on your sat-nav before you've got a chance to delete it. Yeah. So if you're going to record it, take heed and do whatever you need to do. You can set minimum and maximum, uh, minimum distances, minimum duration. So this is much the same sort of data that you've got on your, on your um, TFT, isn't it? Music, you can control your music here. You can shuffle it and repeat. That's all you can do. Shuffle mode, I thought that was like dad dancing. If you do <laughs> dad dancing. <laughs> and then you can go into your settings. You can set your favorite bar to position one, two. So this is all about your music, mu music and you can have your um, favorite bar on the screen, which is good. Wi-Fi, that's how you connect to your Wi-Fi, mobile data, SIM. Does it update units. from Wi-Fi? It must do, must it? Like it will do, yeah. Too. It will update from Wi-Fi and it's also got the USB-C connection so you can connect to a computer and stuff. And then you can change your language and your units, your time in the day, display, and then you can update the system. Cool. And of course, you can restore it to factory settings if you should so wish. Then you can find out the information to the sat nav and read about all the rubbish that nobody ever reads about. So yeah. there you go, you can Just find there. it there. So from settings... Question is, do you like it? Yeah, and I'm going to show you why. <clears throat> so all of these different options, as you can see going up and down, have got different pictures. And I think the pictures... It would be good if you could put your own pictures on there. And sometimes when you're pressing it, so if I want to go there, it now selects that bar, but I've got to select it again by pressing it, unless I'm using the wheel, ah, right. which is a real pain. So let's see if we can find... Let's go somewhere, shall we, Mark? Yep. So, recent destinations. Let's go to Perrinporth Airfield. Whee! Now, down the bottom, you can get these options, and let's see if I can... So I've got to start it again, because I'm trying to use it on the wheel. So let's go to recent options. Perrinporth Airfield. So I'm going to have to put my grubby fingers in here now. So it tells you where we're going to go. This button here will allow you to use the address as a start point or destination, which is really good. So you can work out a route and then you can change things around. So I'm going to use it as a start point, I think. Now let's go back and start again because we want to add a few things in, don't we? So I'm going to use this as a start point, but you can click your options here. And all those options that were in settings, you can set for that route, which is really, really good, I think. Yeah. So you've got your fast, efficient, winding, and all of that sort of stuff that we've already seen. But I don't want to do any of that. I want to go and go. Now, do you remember the options that we could put in there about time to via, time 
uh, distance. That's what these will be. Oh. Along the top, it will give you your next um, instruction. Yeah, yeah, your next turning or yeah. roundabout or whatever. How long you're going to be there, what the speed is, 400 feet. where north is, what time you're going to be there, how long it's going to take and how far away it is. It's really good, isn't it? Oh, I like that. So if I click right on my button, I can get to the active route guidance. I can end it. I can spot marker. I can go into the settings for that route. So if I go into here and put a new waypoint and I want to go to a recent destination, which is going to be St. Moore's. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a really Explode. random route. So now it's going to take us to Perrinporth Airfield via St. Moore's. Now, if you know the geography in Cornwall, that's really quite difficult, isn't it? So I take it, if I hit this one, it's going to show us the whole <laughs> route. So it's going to go from one side of the coast all the way to the other and then back again. But what I do like about this, now watch this, this is really oh, funky. Matt. Look at that. Look at how quickly... Oh, I'm feeling sick. No, I am. Now, I'm in the sea. If I press this it will take us back to where we are but i can zoom in and i can zoom out with the whiz wheel that's cool Let's see if we can go right out that's as far as i can go out so 20 miles out but i can go right in and then it will change its perspective again and as you can see look at this <laughs> i love it so let's say we want to add another waypoint in and i just want to do it there can i just add something so no, so you have to go into here, into here, and then go down to new waypoint. Yep. Or alternative route. So let's see what it comes up with. Oh God. No, that, so, is, an, that is a massive alternative route. However, yeah. that's putting in a nice, some nice bends there. Isn't that it? really is, isn't it? So from that, all with the whizzy wheel, you can see that blue, purple, and, and gray. Like greeny turquoisey. Okay. Oh, yeah. So it's actually highlighting what it is, telling you how far and how how far in K, because it's set up in kilometers in the moment, and how far in time. So you can go and select any one. Now I'll do that one now, but see how quick it is. That's interesting. Oh, it's minutes. Yeah. No, oh, no, that's that's doing it in miles. Oh yeah. Well, and when it, you put that route in, yeah. it'll work it out in kilometers for some reason. That's very strange. The but that's the setting we've not done. See how quick that was to set. That's amazing. Even the XT is slower than that, isn't it? Yeah. Now from there I can go in and we've seen that we can add different waypoints. I can end it. I can skip a waypoint, which is really important for lots of tours that we do, isn't it, with Magellan? Yeah. I can spot mark. So if I I've saved that as a spot mark, save this very place. Wow. The favourites, which we won't publicise, because <laughs> <laughs> it really is not that interesting. <laughs> but that's about all you can do on it, sat nav wise, to find your um, route. But you can um, import GPX files on there. There's slightly few different things that you need to do with the GPX file to get it to show as a route with waypoints that we found. But that's the same as the connected rider. We might well do a, a, a video on that at some point. Yep. But what I'm really impressed with is, look at that. That is so yeah, quick. Right. Yeah, but even the XT doesn't do that. And you can zoom with pinch and zoom, look. It is impressive. It really is good. Having your phone connected and your headset connected to it brings that possibility of the multimedia stuff because there's a hub in there. So it kind of hubs everything together. But this also gives you the information from your bike, doesn't it? So mm -hmm. let's get rid of that. Let's go back out. This is all with the whizzy wheel because we've got the information. So now, when Mark rides, we know what angle his bike's going to be at. Massive 9%. Don't want to go any further than that. It's on a side stand, everyone. <laughs> but hitting right on the whiz wheel, I can go into the lean angle. I can put a compass on there. Now, for some people, using this as a compass is a, something that they would do. I wouldn't ordinarily onboard computer now this is the thing that everybody seems to be really wanting on the nav 6 for some reason and yet it's all on the tft i don't understand it i really don't but anyway but you can get your range on there your mpg 
Only 42.8 miles per gallon, Mark. I'm rubbish. Oh. Your oil levels, your um, tyre pressure monitoring system, how long it's got till service, your battery, your odometer. And you can also reset it. I'm not going to reset it, Mark, because I don't know whether it will reset your whole bike. Cause it to catch fire and then <laughs> we'll all walk off. But I think the unit is a very, very good little unit. I like it. It's 699 pounds, like something it ridiculous. <laughs> However, there are a couple of issues with it. Oh, sorry, I dropped my camera then. Oh, there are a couple of issues with it though. The first issue is if you've got a new RT with a big TFT and you've bought yourself a bracket and we'll show you the bracket because we've got that on film somewhere, it will fit. But I have noticed that when I've put the sat nav on there and tried to find a GPS, I think the bike's GPS is interfering with it and it's taken ages to find it. Oh, wow. I've read in a couple of forums that other people have found that and it seems to be happening on this one as well. And the other issue, I'm gonna take it off, I'm gonna turn your bike off, Mark, so oh, it doesn't run down. When you turn it off, look at that. Your device will be locked in 14 seconds. Your bike's not connected anymore. Oh, right. Or you can just cancel and then you can turn it off, press and hold that button and it bring up the menu and say power off and it shuts down. But come with me to Barney. Oh, Barney, Barney. Now, Barney, my beloved RT, has got my XT fitted at the moment. Now, if you have an RT 2014 up to about 2020, I think, before they put, might be 21, 22 actually, before they put the TFT screen on, yeah. the sat nav will fit in a molded bracket like this. Oh, that's rubbish. But this won't fit in. So you'd have to space this out and then you would lose the functionality of that button which just pushes that clip anyway to clip it on which i think is a bit of a BMW you've made a massive mistake there because a lot of people who want to buy this for these bikes i think oh, i'm only putting that back on i think that bmw have made a big mistake there because people on not necessarily barney bikes they're the best bikes in the world that's a great bike but this one's better what do they say? There are many like it, but this one is mine. <laughs> what? <laughs> Metal jacket yeah. recently. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> there will be people that want a really good sat nav, that want it integrated with different stuff. And I think this will integrate with the whiz wheel on the older bikes, older RTs, but you can't connect it. Because yeah, they've made it just that bit too big to fit on, which I think is a bit of a mistake. It's really quick. It works really well and it's really good at navigating and the spoken word is really good if you've got a bmw car and you've ever used their sat nav this runs the same sort of thing it is tom tom we might well have to reevaluate oh. our thoughts on tom tom but it's tom tom and it works really really well and when i went up to where did i go up swindon london around there i used it for a bit and it sent me off different ways the same as the xt was trying to do and google maps Really quite might be good. something to do with waypoints and shaping points on the uh, yeah map app for the map data. I don't know. And if you do want to know about app uh, about waypoints and shaping points, there's a forum somewhere for you. Yeah, Not no, this one because it's so complicated, <laughs> and we don't want to be hit, filled with hate against <laughs> us for getting something wrong. But really, really good unit. It's expensive. But if you have got a GS, a GSA, something like a 750 GS, 850 GSA, something with a, the BMW preparation that sits separate to the integral RT thing, you, I don't think you'll go wrong with this. I think it'd be really good. £699, a lot of money. Good bit of kit though. So if you like the video, give it a massive thumbs up. You give it two thumbs up if you want. I'd put my thumb up, but they're about to snap off. Yeah, cold. mine's cold. Hit the subscribe button. Sorry for all the sniffing, but it is like one <laughs> degree out here. But we wanted to be somewhere that our addresses didn't show up on the screen. <laughs> it's the second time we filmed it. So go out and get yours if you want. Um, tell us how you're getting on in the description. We're going to play around with it a little bit more. 
Um, but then we got to return it because Ocean mm. were very good and lent it to us so that we could evaluate it, look at it, see how it works, run through the system with you. Um, so yeah, we'll see you in the next video.